Having fun running your very own pub and brew pub simulator? Well, take your bar to the next level with these 10 tips. What'd he say his name was? Gabatron. Hello everyone, I am Gebatron and I've been enjoying Brewpub Simulator, a much more relaxing game compared to the stressful tactical shooters and extraction shooters that I normally play. If you don't know what Brewpub Simulator is, then check the video at the top right before coming back to this one. For the rest of you, here are 10 tips to help run your bar a little more effectively. In no particular order, here we go with tip number one. If a customer orders something you don't have, then simply ask them to leave. Sometimes customers will ask for beers that you simply don't have on your menu. You can serve them a beer you do have, but then they may leave you a bad review as they didn't get what they ordered. You can simply not serve them, but then the line will stack up behind them and all those customers will leave you a bad review as they had to wait in line. Your best course of action is simply to ask them to leave by clicking the right mouse button while looking at them. They will leave and the line can continue moving along. I know in the real world asking a customer to leave is usually associated with rowdy behavior or something negative like that, but in the game it's equivalent to just telling them you don't have what they're looking for. And don't worry, they won't leave you a bad review for being asked to leave. It's simply your best course of action. Bonus tip! Make mental notes of the flavor profiles of the beers that these customers are ordering. Don't be afraid to try them out for yourself. 2. Sell your money makers. Customers will order beers in many different ways. Some will order by name or by style, some by place on the menu, and others by flavor profile. However, some customers will simply ask for any beer. Sell these customers your beer with the highest profit margin to maximize profits. They'll get great beer, you'll get money, and everyone will be happy. There are times where I'm trying to run out of a specific beer and I'll serve that one instead, but 9 out of 10 times I'll serve my highest profit margin beer. 3. Profit Margins and Brewing versus Buying Speaking of profit margins, it's not a bad idea to know what beers are making you the most money. There's a couple different ways to calculate this, and I can see where this bit wouldn't be fun for some of you, and that's understandable. Uh, I think this can help you focus on high-performing beers and help guide you on pricing, but it's definitely not necessary to be successful in the game. Uh, so I think it's helpful to calculate for profit per glass. Let's compare our APA to our West Coast IPA. Our APA recipe makes 13.55 liters, while our IPA makes 14.22 liters. At 500 milliliters per glass, that's 27 glasses of APA and 28 of IPA. We are currently charging $6.25 a glass for APA and $7.50 for IPA. Take those prices times our glasses to get a net income of $168.75 for the APA and $210 for the IPA. Looks like the IPA is the clear winner, right? Well, hold on. We need to subtract the cost of making these beers from those amounts to get profit. The initial investment for supplies to make the APA is $40, while it's $80 for the IPA, giving us $128.75 profit for a batch of APA versus $130 profit for the APA. Those profits divided by glasses per batch give us profit per glass. We end up with $4.77 per glass for the APA and $4.64 per glass for the IPA. This information is already letting me know that perhaps I should try increasing my price for my IPA, but this isn't the whole story. Remember the phrase, initial investment. Uh, we end up initially purchasing more supplies than we need for just one batch of beer, so your profit margins go up on that second and maybe even third keg, of course, depending on your supplies. But adjusted for this, our APA profits go up to $5.51 per glass, and $6.43 per glass on the IPA. Now, this will only happen once every three kegs for the IPA and more often for your APA, but average this over three kegs and it looks more like the APA gives us, you know, about $5.26 per glass while the IPA gives us $5.24 per glass. Looks like I should increase what I'm charging for my IPA. And we'll talk more about how to do this later uh, towards the end of the video in a bonus tip, so stick around to the end. 
just keep in mind that there are differences between your initial profit margins and like your secondary ones. Uh, and of course you can calculate these on larger scales too to get more accurate long-term numbers. You can get as deep with it as you want, you know, if you really like math, but. Okay, on to the second point uh, here, which is buying versus brewing. If we buy our APA from the in-game brewer, it'll cost us $165 for 20 liters. That's 40 glasses. 40 glasses at $6.25 is $250 net income. Subtract cost to get $85 profit. 85 divided by 40 glasses gives us $2.13 profit per glass. That's less than half the profits we were making by brewing the beer ourselves. So why buy the beer when you can brew it yourself? time. It saves you time. Uh, not only that, but if you find yourself out of beer and you don't have any ready for the night, or maybe you just want to fill out your menu, you know, after all, it's better to make $2.13 per glass than nothing at all. So just make sure that you are keeping an eye on all this stuff to help maximize your income. Four, planning ahead. Now that you know what beers are raking in the dough, you can better optimize your menu but you can't sell beer if you don't have beer. More complex beers take longer to brew, so don't get caught without product because you were only focusing on your biggest money makers. It's a good idea to brew beers that take differing amounts of time to ferment, so you know you'll always have something new to put on the menu, or at least that you won't run out of beer while waiting for those big money makers to be ready. Always have a rough idea of what your menu will look like a couple, you know, few days ahead, so you don't get caught with your pants down. Five, this one's pretty simple, but it did take me a few in-game days before I realized it. There is more than one line that forms in your bar. Each of these bar mats here will have a line that forms at it. Early in my first playthrough, I couldn't understand why I had some complaints about wait time, and it was simply because I was neglecting these other lines. Don't make the same mistake I did and take care of these other lines. Six, Stock up on glasses. Washing glasses in the middle of a busy night steals time that could have been better spent serving customers. While spills and trash count against the cleanliness of your bar, dirty glasses do not, so you don't need to spend time gathering them or cleaning them. Save that for later. Make sure you have enough glasses on hand so that you don't need to stop pouring to go gather and clean more glasses in the middle of the rush. Do you guys think dirty glasses all over the pub should count against cleanliness? Uh, let us know your opinion on that down in the comments. Seven, using your space optimally. You're obviously going to want to get, you know, the furniture that's going to help you achieve the aesthetic you're going for. You know, simply how you want your bar to look. But don't overlook being efficient with the limited space you have. Let me show you what I mean. I started my bar with the tables and chairs like this. Uh, first, I thought, you know, it left me plenty of space between the bar and tables for traffic. And second, I just liked the way it looked. But one day I looked at this layout and something clicked in my head as to how I was shorting myself seating. I thought if I can get two seats per side of the table, then why don't I change the orientation of the table? So I did and in the process I gained one seat per table from four to five. This also had the benefit of taking up less space across the length of my bar so I could fit even more tables. I went from having four tables with a total of 13 seats, as some of the tables just couldn't fit all four, uh, to having 19 chairs at those same four tables with room for another table if I want. That's an increase of six more customers that I now have seating for just because I oriented my tables in a way that used my space more optimally. That increases my potential for larger profits. So just make sure that you are keeping an eye out for little things like this when planning the layout of your bar and don't be afraid to experiment a little with your layout. Eight, purchase more supplies than you think you need. This one is pretty simple. You know, sometimes you will need to brew beer for the next day or two, and you may be in a position where you are low on funds. You may be brewing your beer only to find out that you didn't have enough yeast or something, and now you don't have enough money to buy more. Make sure that you are keeping a good stash of ingredients in your inventory to get you through a day or two in the event you don't have enough money. Same goes with kegs, fermenting buckets, 
everything. Make sure you have enough on hand so that you don't have to worry about them in the event you run short on money and need them. You can always sell some stuff if you're really in a pinch, but following this advice will help make sure you don't have to sell things at a loss just to get by. 9. Brew in batches. There are plenty of burners on the stove and those fermentation buckets can hold a lot of mixture, so make sure you are using that volume. Same with your kegs. Brew in double batches or more to take advantage of all that volume. This will help you save time at the stove and will mean you won't have to brew as often. Both good things. 10. Do special tasks right away. This one deals with the unique opportunities that come to you via your in-game email. Once you accept these challenges, make sure to get on top of them right away as they usually come with a time limit. Often these challenges revolve around you brewing special beers that can take a few days to ferment. If you accidentally make a mistake or you find you are short on money to buy a special ingredient, the more time you give yourself to recover, the better. Start working on them immediately to avoid any issues. Not only that, but you'll be able to reap the rewards that much sooner. So start these projects right away to give yourself time to recover from mistakes and so you can benefit as soon as possible. And here's a bonus tip, push your prices. Customers will let you know when your prices are getting too high for them in a couple different ways. Uh, first, through the reviews they leave, and second, through their immediate reaction when you give them the beer, which looks like this. It'll show a mood reaction followed by, you know, their issue. So push your prices up until you start getting these reactions and then lower them slightly to get the most money while keeping customers happy. And bonus, bonus tip relating to this specific topic, you can adjust prices via the menu even when the bar is open. An example here where I was selling Leonard's Lemon for $7 and received a less than ideal reaction, so I lowered my price back down. This saved me from a bunch of negative reviews throughout the night that I probably would have gotten by waiting until the next morning uh, to adjust this. And here's an extra special bonus tip just for those who stuck around to the end. You can throw things. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is, you know, this isn't too useful, but it can save you some time with throwing things away in the trash like your empty ingredient containers while brewing. There you have it. That's my list of 10 tips to help you get ahead in Brewpub Simulator. Uh, what are your tips? Make sure to put them down in the comments. And if we get enough good ones, maybe I'll make a second video featuring your tips. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video and maybe learned something new or at least, you know, got some fresh perspective. Now's the time to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Please do all the things to help me beat the algorithm. Tons of ways to help support the channel down in the video description. I look forward to reading your tips. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one. Cheers!